Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. We are in part three of our lesson series. And today we're going to look at the idea of a way to worship. We're talking about worshiping the creator, but now let's look at the way. We, we've dealt with some things that hopefully have been heavy and have really hit your heart in these past two studies. But today, let's talk about a way to worship. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, that you speak to our hearts and we thank you. Amen. A way to worship. And a way to worship is to realize that our adoration, my adoration of God is equal or equates to my attention to others. My adoration to God and then my attention to others. This again is bringing the life into the worship experience. This extends beyond a day or an isolated place. This goes into the tenor and, and, and the, the, the melody of my life and how I live. And that's manifested in how I deal with other people. See, Jesus was a worshiper. And we know that we were, he was a worshiper because not only did he go into the synagogue on the seventh day Sabbath, which we still keep today, but he also treated people in that synagogue on that day a certain way. And he treated people outside of that synagogue on all other days a certain way. And I hope you realize that he treats people that same way all the time. That's why when you go to the Bible in Isaiah, this chapter in Isaiah 58 is special because it, it, it crystallizes the value of when we worship the Lord, which biblically is the seventh day Sabbath. He encourages us to do so. But he also deals with the why. Let's get to it because he says, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Where have we gone wrong? Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light into approaching to God. They enjoy worship. They love going to church. But now let's read on to verse six. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So in the previous verses, he also said how they like to fast. But is this the fast that I've chosen? And if you will, is this the worship that I really want? But this is what I want you to do. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Now, I know when we look at Isaiah 58, many people emphasize the aspects of verse seven because that deals with practical ministry, feeding the hungry, clothing those who need clothing, uh, giving those a leg up who need a hand up. These are aspects of ministry, but I really want us to focus on verse six because they have to deal with the idea of releasing people from burdens, letting the oppressed go free, breaking every yoke. This is dealing with the emotional relational aspect of ministry, dealing with people who we have not forgiven, letting them go free, finding the idea and, and, and sharing the gospel to break yokes, giving people the power and, and, and helping people overcome addictions and, and tendencies and habits that have burdened them in their lives. Lifestyle changes, health adjustments and and healing that comes through changing how we live these are things that the lord says this is what i really want us to be doing this is religion this is where you see the gospel come alive and it comes alive in our attention to others dealing with other people even blessing others isaiah 58 verse 10 says and if thy draw out or rather if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry to satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. The idea of unfailing waters is not us being blessed unfailingly alone. The prosperity gospel and the idea of you can do it, you can be it. The Lord says, I want you to be that water that blesses other people. I want to pour into you so you can pour into others. He even says you'll be like a watered garden and a spring of water that is so full, not for fullness sake, but full to pour into others. 
This is the value and a way to worship. So you mean to say that we're worshiping the Lord by living out the gospel. We worship the Lord by helping other people. We worship the Lord by being a blessing, being a water to those who are thirsty. Absolutely. Both literally, both literally and figuratively and emotionally and spiritually. Let's be a spring in our house. Be a spring in your school. Be a spring at work. Be a spring in your neighborhood. Because this is the way to worship. Not just preaching the gospel, but in verity, living the gospel.